Hey everybody, it's great to be here. Like Travis mentioned, I am Bill Dorfeld. I'm the editor-in-chief for the Nordic APIs blog. And something that is really passionate to me is how we find APIs. So how do we market them? How do we make them searchable for developers to find out there on the web? So that's what I'm going to talk about today. API marketing, specifically, how to make your service more discoverable. Because that's what we all want in the end of the day. We want to increase the conversion funnel and get more people interested in, about, in our program. So let's put ourselves in the shoes of a developer. They're likely just going to go to Google to search for what they want. So similarly to how you search for anything on Google, like if you wanted the best Fika in Stockholm, you get a drop-down menu like this. You can see what cafes there are right in your area. It's great. All the information is right there. So the same is true for APIs. So if you search something like an email API, it's great. You get this easy drop-down menu. Uh, everything is organized. You see you can filter things by different architecture type, like REST, GraphQL, SOAP. You can even see all the different SDKs that are available for that API. So that's how you discover APIs. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit. Obviously, I'm kidding. This is simply a mock-up. It doesn't exist right now. Actually, getting all the metadata together to make this sort of thing possible is pretty difficult. And we haven't reached the standards necessary to make something like that happen. As it stands, the way we discover APIs is still a little bit fractured. Even though there's 18,000 estimated public APIs in existence, the way we categorize them um, so that search engines can find them is still a little bit hanky. There's uh, different approaches, whether we be hand curating them or using automated approaches for categorizing APIs. When it comes down to it, search engine optimization is sadly still your best option most of the time. Word of mouth is a great tool, but it's hard to judge. So I think this is going to become more and more of a pressing concern with the growth of the industry slated for the future. We're at 18,000 public APIs currently, but with open banking, with advances in artificial intelligence, and other sectors like travel, shopping, e-commerce, I think we're going to see a lot more saturation of these really niche API groups. So if you are offering a public service, how do you stand out amongst the competition? And how do you position your service for discovery? So today, I want to talk about strategies we can employ to make the API more marketable. So it's my idea that we can use a three by three tier discovery approach using uh, increasing the visibility of the service, increasing the usability of the service, and having great advocacy that follows your API program. So for this talk, I'm going to assume a couple things. One, that you do have an API that you have released. Um, I'm mainly talking about public APIs, but some strategies here can apply to partner programs and private programs. Um, and I'm assuming that you do want more users, because in the end, we want more money so we can celebrate. So first off, visibility. Uh, sadly, a lot of API providers undervalue um, search, and en search engine optimization in the field of the API developer homepages. I think increasing the attention we give to the word count on these pages is actually really important right now. So you can do so with making more human-readable descriptions that cater to non-developer audiences. Um, I think you should go through a lot of research to develop a target keyword. So viewing these developer home pages from a more of a copywriting perspective can really help you optimize for different consumer types or even different geographical locations. Uh, something I've noticed lately are that microservices have begun to segment their public presences into very niche pages so that they can cater to different audiences. And I think that's a different approach as well. 
Using tools like Google AdWords Keyword Tool can be helpful for finding out uh, the performance of your target keywords and what your audience is searching for. So I did a little test. I looked up Text analysis, uh, analysis API, and the top performer was Alien. And they, what they did was they balanced the frequency with the keyword variance for all the content on the landing page of their API service. And they are the top performers on Google search results. So this is proof that landing page content does matter. Even though we're providing a very technical service, I think we need to offer a very marketable front end. Another way to do so, to improve the front end of an API, is to use something like an open API definition. API definitions have been about uh, the industry for a while, including RAML, API Blueprint, Rapid ML, things like that. But lately, Open API has really taken full stride. This can help in increasing uh, your front end through client libraries, software developer kits, um, generating beautiful documentation, and leading to a better, more discoverable API. There have also been other discovery formats out there, like APIs.json, which was envisioned by API Evangelist as sort of like a sitemap.xml file that you could include in your root directory so that search engines could find your API. Uh, surprisingly, schema.org doesn't have a model for an API. Something that I've been interested in lately is what APIs.guru is doing. They're trying to uh, collate a sort of Wikipedia of APIs, essentially creating metadata for all the APIs in existence so that people can extend that, basically having a REST API to learn about more APIs. In fact, there have been so many approaches to how we organize and categorize these APIs that a lot of companies are creating these directories. Sure, they have their own marketing angles behind them, but they are exposing a lot of services to a wider audience. So I want to go through these briefly and encourage you all, if you have time, to profile your API with these sites. So Programmable Web is probably some service you've, you've heard. It's the largest directory of APIs out there. They have about 18,000 cat uh, cataloged. And it's all human generated, so the scalability of this is kind of in question. Rapid API is a more curated directory turning into a marketplace where APIs are compared against one another. APIs.guru, like I said earlier, is sort of a Wikipedia for APIs. Um, a lot of these directories, you can organize different APIs by industry and different service types. So discovering something that is really relevant to what the developer needs is becoming more easy. Things like a GitHub repo is helpful, or a hand curated searchable directory like API list. As you can see, there's been so many initiatives of people trying to figure out this issue of how we discover and profile all these API services. So, my advice is to take advantage of that, um, profile your API in these sites, and you can expand your reach into new networks. So one is Hitch, Product Hunt is a good tool, API Catalogin is a Swedish directory. Um, to take a picture of this, I also just posted this list to my Twitter, so you can visit that instead of writing it all down right now. So next up, when we talk about API marketing, I think it's really important to talk about usability. So that includes things like improving the API documentation, because really, that's your API, API's best tool for not only converting to potential users, but for having a place of ongoing support. So considering how we can beautify this with a nice three-column layout, or if you do have an API definition, quickly generating uh, some great looking documentation is totally possible. There's about 30 documentation generation solutions that I've 
uh, researched and talked about on the blog. A great example of developer experience and easy usability is Stripe. Um, this is just a screenshot of their documentation. Really nice layout. They have all the code samples in relevant languages for their potential developers. And this is all public facing, which some enterprises still shy away from, but I think that's very important. But docs aren't only part, th that's only part of the, uh, in the entire picture when we're talking about a developer center. It's my belief that there are seven main ingredients for marketing an API. So your developer center should have a great getting started guide, an easy authentication guide with step-by-step -step instruction, uh, clear API documentation, which I already mentioned. Something like a testing console or a playground is becoming more expected. Developers want easy access to the input output of your service. So having that available, I think, is really important. And then including developer resources, code samples, software developer kits, as well as easy support channels. So all this is founded upon uh, platform policy to protect you legally. So that's what I feel uh, it makes up a great, superb developer center. Next, these front-facing portals should cater more to non-developers, because as the economy grows, we're getting a lot more business folks interested in a very technical solution. So that means people like higher up architects or designers, entrepreneurs, we need to cater um, our content to them as well. The industry best practices, this is what we're going to dig into in this conference. I'm very excited for all of you to learn more about this. Um, there are accepted practices that have become more or less expected among API providers. So following these, learning from these, is going to really improve your program. When we talk about discoverability, sometimes that's confused with something called dynamic behavior, which is uh, closely linked with hypermedia. So that's uh, understanding how we can improve the exchange between the client and server. Um, yeah, just to specify, I'm, I'm more talking about the marketing side of things, but considering this can greatly improve the usability and findability of your method calls and specific API data. So when we're thinking about how we build APIs, Roy Fielding said, the effort required to design something is inversely proportional to the simplicity of the result. And I think API marketing needs to use that same tenet. So we're doing all this work, and the end product needs to be usable and easy for your developers to consume. Lastly, advocacy is a huge part of how developers end up discovering APIs. Last year, we interviewed some top evangelists around the economy, and we codified some main tenets that they use in their day-to-day -day jobs. Um, I can just go through a little bit here. Understanding the user base, becoming very familiar with that customer, communicating the value of the product in a very succinct way. Um, always be observing, gathering feedback is important for iterating a program, as well as building a, uh, and maintaining a knowledge center online. I think that's really important. Um, something that they do often are focusing on customer relations, events, and support. So if you're evangelizing any API program, take consideration of these tenants. Um, something that Liz Rush, then evangelist at Algorithmia, a Seattle startup, told me was that the primary role of a developer evangelist is to help customers and potential users see the value and benefit in your API to the extent that they themselves become evangelists for your company. So that's the end goal. You want to really coddle that initial group so that they will uh, talk about it to all their friends. So that's really important. Also um, uh, important is focusing on where we're promoting. So there's a lot of uh, API blogs out there, like Programmable Web, API Evangelist, Developer Weekly, getting in tune with these channels, I think, can really help you expand your network. 
as well as social channels like Product Hunt um, or Stack Overflow can really make or break uh, how successful your program is in terms of marketing. Some success story is ipinfo.io, which is a very simple API. All it does is return IP, uh, IP info given cer certain information. And you can see the sort of metadata it provides right there. But all the owner did was find the right Stack Overflow question to respond to. And just because they did that, they're receiving 250 mil million daily requests. Uh, so at zero dollar budget, it's the easiest marketing ever. Uh, that kind of random success doesn't happen easily. It's pretty rare. Normally, um, providers are really fostering a community of developers. So that's what uh, I definitely advise. Decreasing that one support, having all your resources available in, in terms of a forum or knowledge base so that you're not wasting money on one-to-one -one support, but offering it if need be. The most important thing is to uh, always be producing evergreen content. I'm uh, definitely a fan of that. So creating things that are credible and readable that your audiences will enjoy and share with other people. Uh, I think the industry really has embraced a vendor neutral approach to talking about technology. And so using that in your own marketing and the content that you generate I think is really important. In the end, you want to own the conversation around your API. And this is something Ken Lane said recently. Either you own the conversation around your APIs or someone else will. And that's true for any public app that might not have a public API presence. This happened with Tinder recently. A third party uh, put the API on GitHub, and now Tinder doesn't own that voice. So in summary, the way we discover APIs is really important, and I think it's going to become ever important as the industry expands. Um, if you do want to make your service more discoverable, if you're ready to promote it, I advise you to create an API definition, think about different API discovery formats, and uh, I think we're going to see more evolution outside of REST and into GraphQL and how GraphQL uh, will help discover and link APIs, so keep in mind about that. Um, next, profile your API and the growing number of directories available, because why not? It's pretty easy. And uh, consider the search engine optimization and what you can do with your copy on your developer homepages, because that is often undervalued and can be leveraged to increase the amount of people uh, searching for your API. So. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to hand things over to Ronnie now.